Okay, I'm gonna show you a little math hack, a little math trick, if you will, uh, to solve this equation. Now, you don't need to know this particular math hack to solve this equation, but uh, if you understand this little math technique, this little strategy, this is gonna really help you out uh, on a lot of different type of exams, especially things like the SAT or ACT, uh, where they're, you know, it's not so quite clear on how to approach the problem. If you can remember this little technique, this comes in very, very handy. Uh, of course, I'll show you that in just one second, but let's take a look at the problem. And that is if uh, A plus B over three is equal to A over three plus six, well, what is B equal to? All right, so if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I will show you the correct solution for B. And then I'm gonna show you two ways to do this problem. The first way is probably the way that most of you are gonna do this problem. And then the second way is uh, we're going to use this nice little technique that comes in very, very handy. So uh, hopefully you'll stick around for all of this. But before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And uh, really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so here is the problem we wanna solve for B. What is B equal to? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. B is equal to 18. Okay, so if you got this correct, that is fantastic. Let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of solving. I guess we can classify this as a rational equation. Okay, so equations in algebra that have fractions, uh, where the numerator and denominator are polynomial functions. That's a little bit, getting a little bit overly uh, technical here. But effectively, if you have uh, equations that have fractions in them in algebra, these are what we call rational equations, right? So even if you didn't know that, if you were able to solve this, that is fantastic. Okay, now, again, most of you that were able to solve this or reason through this, uh, probably used a couple different uh, techniques. Nothing wrong with those strategies. Okay, so great job. Good for you. But what I'm going to show you here is a technique, a little math hack, a little math trick, right? We always like these little secret little tools uh, that you can apply. And sometimes you need these little specialty tools. This is very much like, let's say you are a carpenter, right? Uh, or, you know, you build something and here is your toolbox, right? So, you know, typically you're going to use this tool or this tool, you know, a saw, a screwdriver, a hammer, but every so often you need a specialty tool, right? You'll need something, you know, that's just for this one type of situation. And that's what I'm going to show you. And that's exactly how you want to think of things in mathematics is the skills that you are developing are like little tools that you can apply. Okay. But uh, again, you know, um, you know, these specialty tools make the job of solving things a lot easier easier okay so that's kind of what i want to be showing you here and if you can remember this this is going to really pay off especially on a uh, standardized test where you know the questions are kind of like um, not as direct uh, as uh, you know what you might face on a, like a chapter test in a typical math course okay so let's go ahead and get into this right now so here we have uh, an if statement don't let this kind of confuse you what we really have is this equation okay so we have this equation, a plus b over three is equal to a over three plus six, and we're looking to solve for the variable um, uh, b here, right? So that's the objective. So solve this equation for b. So don't let this if uh, thing kind of confuse you. And uh, I think sometimes students, you know, will look at that like, oh, if, what do I, is this kind of like something different? No, we're just solving for b here. All right, so how can we do this? Well, a couple different approaches. This is a good, clean, direct approach. So what we're gonna have to do here is add these uh, fractions, okay? So we have a over three plus six. We can kind of think of this as six over one. So the lowest common denominator is three. I can multiply both the numerator and denominator by three here. So I'm gonna have three, uh, 18 over three, 
then I can um, simply add the numerators. That would be a, um, a plus 18 over 3. So that's one uh, kind of way to think about um, adding these fractions. Another easier way, actually, is to use the bow tie method. And if you're not familiar with that, check out my, all my videos on fractions on my YouTube channel. Uh, this is extremely important, super easy. So what I can do is just go 1 times A, that's A, uh, 3 times 6, that's uh, 18, and then 3 times 1 is 3. Okay, so there you go. That's a most, uh, you know, very easy direct approach to just add these fractions up real quick. Okay, so now we have one fraction equaling to another fraction over here. This is a effectively what we call a proportion in algebra. Okay, even if you know you don't know uh, know what a proportion is, this particular um, proportion or equation is super easy because look what we have. We have the same denominator. We have two fractions. They're equaling. Uh, they're equal to one another. And so if you have one fraction, it's equal to this fraction, and the denominators are the same. Well, then the numerators must be equivalent, right? These must be the same because the denominators are the same and these fractions are equal to one another. So you, know, you want to look for opportunities like that. Now, if this was a situation where the denominator down here was something like it di was different, then we couldn't just equate the numerators, obviously, right? We would have to take some additional steps. But let's go ahead and um, kind of emphasize some other best practices here. Now, in algebra, uh, when you have a proportion, in this particular case, you can kind of get uh, uh, you can get away with making this mistake. But anytime you have sums or differences, then things that involve variables, get in the habit of put parentheses around those expressions. Okay, in this case, you don't technically need to do it, do this. Okay, but you should always just get in the habit of doing so. It will pay, it will really minimize you making a lot of errors. Okay, so as we talked about, we have two uh, uh, fractions here. We have the same denominators. This fraction is equal to this fraction, so the numerators must be the same. So we can simply just equate the numerators. So a plus b is equal to a plus 18. And again, we're looking to solve for b. All right, so this is going to be super easy here. I'm just going to go ahead and subtract a from both sides of the equation, and I'm going to get b is equal to 18. All right, that's a very good approach, uh, straightforward. And actually, for this particular question, that's not a bad option to choose. Okay. But it, but it just kind of turned out in this case, you could kind of do this, all right? But I'm going to show you a little tool, a little technique that you should keep in mind when you're dealing with equations or situations with fractions, okay? It's this little kind of thing that should be in the back of your head, and I'm going to show you that right now. But, but uh, before, <laughs> I'm just kind of stumbling on my words here, but before, excuse me, uh, I show you that, I want to show you this little subscribe uh, button right here. And of course, this is not the one that I want you to um, click, but if you can hit that subscribe button and that notification bell, this has a tremendous impact on my YouTube channel. I've been on YouTube for, I guess, like over 10 plus years. I've have over, I have over 2,000 plus videos from basic math to advanced math and calculus and everything in between. So if you're new to my channel, please take advantage of all this content. How I, The way I try to teach math is to try to teach it in a way that anyone and everyone can understand, right? Especially uh, not in a not like a textbook technical way. You know, that's boring, you know, uh, and one, it doesn't really work for most uh, people. And that's typically the reason why a lot of students struggle is, you know, they're not getting kind of clear and understandable instruction. Okay, so that's part one of being successful in math. The second part is obviously you have to practice this stuff, but it is my passion to try to deliver this instruction, but you have no idea how much it helps me uh, if you hit that subscribe button. And a matter of fact, uh, as you're doing that, this is my facial expression. Let's go ahead and continue on with the problem, and I'm gonna show you this technique right now. Okay, so here is this, uh, uh, technique. You know, when you want, when you see a fraction like this, a plus b over three, okay, and you're just kind of like looking at it. Anytime you have a fraction, uh, especially when you have a, a, like a more involved expression in the numerator, okay. In other words, it's not just one number. There's some other stuff up there, and we have one denominator. You can split this fraction, okay. So in other words, just kind of reverse engineer this. This technique 
uh, is used even all the way through like calculus, okay? But it's better for you to kind of get used to it in algebra. Uh, it's not difficult, right? So what we're going to do is say, okay, we have a plus b over 3. Well, what was the problem before we got this as the answer, if you will? Well, we can split this this way, right? a over 3 plus b over 3. If I gave you this problem here, you would say, oh, we have the same denominator, so this would be a plus b over 3 is the correct answer. But there's value to be able to split this fraction, okay? And in this particular case, if we split the fraction, we have a over 3 plus b over 3 is equal to a over 3 plus 6. And you might notice, oh, look, I have a over 3 here and a over 3 here. These kind of basically cross cancel one another, okay? In other words, I could just subtract both sides of the equation by a over 3 and they go away, okay? So that leaves me with this lovely equation, b over 3 is equal to 6, all right? So this particular technique, now some of you might be saying to yourself, well, you know, what you showed me previously is pretty simple as well, but I'm telling you right now, splitting the fraction is something you're going to have to do in many parts of algebra and uh, more advanced math like calculus, right? There's something called partial fractions, which may be one of the most difficult things that uh, uh, students learn up into uh, algebra, okay? Basically, most students that learn partial fractions look like this when they get done doing problems. It's, it's not easy stuff. And if you're interested in learning about partial fractions, you can check that out uh, in my pre-calculus course. Matter of fact, I'll leave links to all my most popular courses uh, in here. But basically, um, you know, this stuff is going to come up, right? And you just want to kind of have this mindset. Now, you may not choose to split the fractions. You might just say, yeah, I'll just kind of be more, you know, use another approach to do this. But you need to un be thinking about this as, a, as an option, okay? All right, so now we have b uh, over 3 is equal to 6. So we could just think of this as a simple proportion and uh, just go, all right, 1 times b is b and 3 times 6 is 18. There you go. B is equal to 18. All right. So probably, you know, for me, you know, I would have probably taken this approach, kind of split this fractions, but it's really kind of developing your eye to see things, all right? And you want to kind of add to your math toolbox, right? They'll, again, these are kind of specialty tools that you'll use from time to time. But, uh, you know, it, you know, these metaphors are really good, you know, like in terms of mathematics if you're like oh well i don't i forgot this math tool or this technique well is there another way i can you know approach the problem yes you could still solve the problem same thing right like if you don't have this specialty tool in your actual tool uh, box can you get the job done can you uh, you know fix what you're trying to do using other tools yes you probably could but it's just not going to be as easy right it's probably going to take you longer and harder work and remember uh, math is a skill, okay? And the more skills you acquire, the better off you're going to be able to solve a wide variety of different type of equations. Okay, so if you're at this level of mathematics, and of course this is Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and beyond, I'm going to leave links to my uh, uh, algebra courses and geometry courses, my most popular courses in the description. So that's my best full instruction, but I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel that go over all different sorts of unique situations because I really am trying to train you or prepare you for those little oddball type of scenarios that come up from time to time. As a matter of fact, they come up pretty frequently, especially as you get into more advanced mathematics. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.